Just respond and worship with us. It's an amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. For I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave. Hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave. Welcome home. The prodigal is welcome home, a sinner now saved. For the God who died came back to life, and everything has changed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Sing, oh death. Oh death, where is your sting? Oh fear, where is your power? The mighty King of kings has disarmed you. Delivered and redeemed. Eternal life is ours. Your praise is name forever.
Good evening, Sierra family. I'm Tim Fazio. I'm a grateful believer in our Lord Jesus Christ who struggles with feelings of inadequacy, anger, and lust. Hey, it's really great to have you here at, uh, at CR tonight. We talked last week about the parable of the prodigal son, the first half. We're going to do the second half tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. I am really looking forward to that discussion. Before we do that, let's do a few announcements. Don't forget about uh, May 31st, church worship service. For that information, go to the ABC website. It'll be a great time. Make sure you check that out. And then start dates for the new 12-step groups. We don't have those set yet, but we do need to know if you're interested. If you are interested in the new 12-step groups, women, men, either one, please let us know. You can let us know by emailing candy at candy at abcchurch.org, candy at abcchurch.org. Please let us know if you're interested. We've got some leaders that are chomping at the bit. They're excited to get going, guys. So if you're interested at all, please let us know as soon as possible. And then save the date. We talked real briefly about CR Summit last week. Um, if you are interested in going to CR Summit, and it, it's different this year, it's going to be a live feed, and we're going to, as a group, do it live at ABC Church. As we do that, we're going to be able to enjoy the summit. We're going to be able to enjoy, enjoy some food together. If that's something you're interested in, it's July 30th and 31st. Mark it in your calendar. We'll get more information out in the weeks to come. And lastly, see our Thursday nights. Again, we talked about it briefly last week. We're not going to change the format on Thursday night CR at this time. Let me explain the reason why. If we were to do that, if we were going to if we were going to go live Thursday night at the church, we'd have to do so with face masks. We'd have to limit the number of people that walked in. We'd have to stay social distance. It, it would be a very sterile environment. And I truly believe what we're doing right now with the CR Zoom meeting and the, and the devotionals is more effective than, than would be to do a sterile environment for CR. When we can get together and do CR like it's meant to be done, being able to love on each other and hug each other, we'll be right on it. But until then, we're going to continue this format. If you have any questions or discussion on that, please call me at the church. I'll be happy to talk to you about that. I'm really excited about the second half of the book of, of uh, the parable of the prodigal son. You can find that in Luke 15, 11 through 32. In fact, I challenged you last week to read that. I hope you did. Um, it's a great read. Please do if you have not already. So last week we saw the son, the younger of two sons, take his early retirement, go to a foreign uh, distant country and, and spend everything he had on loose living. He, we saw him lose everything. We saw him at the end of his rope. He was broke, hungry, in despair, and he decided, he decided to go back to his father. And we talked about how, how difficult that would have been for him, very humbling, and it took a lot of strength for him to decide to go back to the father, but he did. And we talked also about the fact that, <clears throat> excuse me, in the decision that he made, it would have been such a relief to think through and say, I'm done, I'm going back, I'm turning to my father. So we talked about that last week. I heard the term this week, barn sour horse, barn sour horse. Have you ever heard that before? It's about a horse that they go out on a ride, a trail ride or whatever, they're tired. All they wanna do is go back to the barn. And as soon as you start heading back to the barn, they start running. All they want to do is get back to the barn. They want to have comfort. They want to have food. It reminded me of the prodigal son. So that's where we are with the prodigal son. He's heading home. He's probably in a hurry. Uh, this week, let's look at the rest of the, sto of the story. As I said, he was going home to apologize to dad. Uh, he, was, he, he was going back in full knowledge that he wanted to disown himself as a son and just become a worker. He just wanted to be able to have a job and have something to eat. Let's look at Luke 15, 18 through 19, when he decided that he was going to be heading back. So Luke 15, 18 and 19, it says, I will, go, I will go back to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me 
uh, one of your hired men. And that's really, that's important because we'll see that later he doesn't even get to finish this speech. It really appears, doesn't it, that he's practicing a speech. Now, I don't know that for sure, but when we have a, a very important message that we wanted to deliver to somebody, don't we take the time to think through the words carefully? I know I do. And we, we think through and we think through, and I've got to believe that's what we have here. He's thinking through. But let's see what happens in verses 20 through 24. And he got up and he came to his, fa to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him. What does that tell you about the father? The father longed for him to return. He was watching for him. He had to be. He saw him from a long way off. He'd been waiting, longing for the return of his son. He saw him from a long way off and he felt compassion. And he ran and he embraced him and he kissed him. Oh man, what a, what a visual of a father, a loving, unconditionally loving father that runs out and hugs his son. That's the heavenly father that we have. You know, I know that many of us have not had that great of an earthly father, but you know what? We all have a great heavenly father who longs for us to return to him, who, who unconditionally loves us in all that we do so much that even though we are sinners, he died for us. In John 16, 33, it says, these things I've spoken to you that in me you may have, have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage, I've overcome the world. In the world we will have tribulation. It's not if we will have tribulation, it's we will have tribulation. So the, the, the reality is we will have tribulation. And so the definition of who we are isn't that we have tribulation, but what do we do with them once we have them? John, 1 John 4, 4 says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. When we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit comes and indwells us. He lives within us. And greater is he that is in us than he that tempts us in this world. That's great for us to know. You know, there are so many times in this life that I've turned to my own strengths and my own abilities when the temptations of this world, when the tri tribulations of this world are upon me. And I turn to my own ways to try to overcome them. Have you done that before? Have you done that where you were struggling with something and you turn to your own powers and your own strength to overcome? I have. How's that working out for you? It's tough. So here's a question for us for today. <clears throat> Is there a trial or a tribulation you, in your life right now that you're currently dealing with and you have not given it over to the Father? Is there a trial or tribulation in your life you're currently dealing with that you have not given over to your heavenly Father? And how's that working out for you? I hope you have a great discussion on this, guys. Let, let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you are an unconditional, loving, heavenly Father. You loved us so much, you even knew the trials, the tribulations, the disappointments that we would have in our life. You knew the sins that we would commit even before we did them, yet you still chose to die for us. That's a great Heavenly Father. And Lord, all you want us to do is turn to you. Cast our cares on you because you care for us. That's what you want. And yet, we try so hard to hide and, and, and take care of the problem on our, on, our, on our own. Yet you call us to give them to you. Lord, in our discussions tonight, let us be honest with each other. Let us discuss the things that we're going through that we have not given up to you yet. And Lord, may you work through us and may you talk to us in this group discussion. And, and may you let us see how we need to turn to you. 
Lord, I pray these things in your name. Amen. Hey, guys, I hope you, hope you have a great discussion uh, today. Before you go, hey, if you have a prayer request, please, there's a link. Click on the link. Fill out a prayer request and, and uh, get it, uh, send it to us. And we love praying for you. And also, as always, you're going to be receiving a link, uh, if you haven't already, to go to your groups. Please jump on and do that. If you're not receiving these texts, please let, let us know. Email Candy at candy at abcchurch.org. Give her your cell phone number and your carrier, and we'll put you on that database. If you have any trouble getting on the calls today on the uh, Zoom meetings, ladies, contact Candy at area code 805 296 9305. That's 296 9305. And if you're having any problems, men, get a hold of Tim at area code 805 550 one two one two i hope you enjoy your time together have a great uh, conversation and we'll see you next week thanks